Hi everyone and welcome to another day of GSC at home. You're here with me, my name is Jennifer and today we are going to have a look at the world of forensic science and in particular the study of fingerprints. Now I'm going to be asking some questions throughout this video so feel free to pause, have a little think and discuss it with the people around you and see what answers you can come up with. So let's get started. So what is forensic science? Well, forensic science is using scientific methods in order to solve crimes. Now this means collecting and analysing evidence in order to put together a picture of what might have happened and who might have been involved. Now we can go back all the way to the 1800s to a French scientist called Edmund Lockhart. And he came up with the idea that every contact leaves a trace. Now this means that even if you might not notice, you are leaving tiny little bits of yourself behind wherever you go. So thinking about evidence in particular, what kind of things do you think can be left behind? So what did you come up with? When we think about evidence from a crime scene, they might be more physical things, things like hair, blood, DNA, and of course, our fingerprints. But with technological advances, we may actually leave a technological footprint as well. Now this can be something like CCTV footage, uh, a card transaction in a shop, or even logging onto a Wi-Fi network can give us information about where someone is at a particular time. But today we are going to focus on the study of fingerprints. The study of fingerprints is called dactyloscopy. Now that sounds like a long complicated word, but don't worry, when we break it down it's much easier to understand. You might have heard the word dactyl before when we talk about a dinosaur called a pterodactyl. Now dactyl actually comes from a Greek word which means fingers. So when we say pterodactyl, it actually means winged fingers. And dactyloscopy is the study of the prints on our fingers. But where do we get our prints from? Well, we get our prints while we're growing in the womb. The amount of space that we have around us and the things that we touch create something called friction ridges. These grow and develop as we grow and turn into our fingerprints. Now your fingerprints are unique to you. No one else has the same ones. Even identical twins have different fingerprints. And in fact, scientists believe that there's a one in 64 billion chance that two people would have the same fingerprints. Interestingly, the prints on your toes, the prints that your lips make, and the funny squiggly lines that your ears make are also unique to you. The fact that they're so unique makes them really useful in identifying people. Whenever we touch an object, the oils in our hands and our fingers in particular leave behind a print. Now we call this a latent print, and that means that we can't really see it. And at crime scenes, we can use a special dust to allow us to see these prints, which can then be lifted off the surface with a little bit of sticky tape. Now that we know a bit about the background, I thought we could give it a go and try and lift a print of our own. So for this activity, you'll need something to lay your print onto. I'm gonna use an old CD or DVD. These are really good at collecting prints and it's flat so I can lay it down on the surface and it's reflective so it can help me find my print. You're going to need a powder to dust with. I'm going to use corn flour. You're also going to need a big fluffy brush. I'm going to use a makeup brush, but a paintbrush with some really soft bristles should work well too. You're also going to need some sticky tape to lift your print and a contrasting piece of paper. So a dark piece of paper will allow the corn flour to show up. Don't worry if you don't have dark paper, I found some white paper that I was able to colour in with a black marker. So once we're set up with all our materials, the first thing you want to do is build up some natural oils on your finger. The best way to do this is actually to rub your finger on your forehead. I know it sounds really gross but I promise it does work. Once you think that we've built up enough oils, you can press your finger gently onto your object. Now you might just be able to see the print that I've left behind there, but we're going to reveal it using our powder. So I'm going to take my brush and dip it very gently into our powder. You don't need a lot with this at all, less is definitely more. So 
So I'm going to gently tap the excess onto my print. And if there's any excess on the brush, we can just tap it back into our pot to use again later. Now very gently, barely even touching our print, we want to dust away any of the excess. Now we're being super careful with this, we don't want to brush away our print and any of your hard work so far. So now that we can see it more clearly, this is the tricky part. We're going to lift our print using our sticky tape. So we take our tape and pop it over our print and very gently press it down. Now we're going to try and lift our print. So we peel back the sticky tape and hopefully it will take our print with it. Now don't worry if you can still see a bit on our object, there should be enough on your tape for you to see it. You should be able to see a little bit of that there. And then we're going to place it down on our piece of paper. Again, very gently, we don't want to smudge it. And there you have it, you should have your lifted print. Now don't worry if you don't get this to work first time, it is a really tricky experiment and it does take a bit of practice. But for us to have a look at our fingerprints in a bit more detail, we can use ink to have a look at the patterns instead. So for this part, you're going to need some ink or some paint. I have some paint from an old craft set, a paintbrush and some paper to put your print down onto. Now you can use felt tip pens and colour in your finger, but just be aware that these might stain your fingers a little bit. So when we're using paint, it's always useful to have some kitchen paper ready just in case. So to use the paint, I'm going to take some of my colour and I'm going to paint the tip of my finger. Now you want to make sure that you're painting all the way down to that first little crease. This will ensure that we get an accurate print. If we're just using the tip of our finger, all of our prints will look the same. I'm going to take any excess off on my kitchen paper and I'm going to roll my print from one side all the way around to the other. And we should be able to see our print and the lines and patterns a bit more clearly. So now that we've got our fingerprints, what is it that we're actually looking at? Well, at a very basic level, your fingerprints can be categorised or grouped into three main patterns. And we're going to go through each one in turn. So the first one is loops. Loops are where the ridges or the lines come in from one side, go up to a peak, round and back out the side that they came in. Now these are very common, about 65-70% to 70 of our population will have loops and actually all of my fingerprints are loops. The next one is whorls. Whorls are like whirlpools, there are lots of little circles all inside each other. Now these are less common, only about 30-40% to 40 of our population will have whorls. Now the last one is the rarest one arches. Only 5% of our population will have arches. This means that the lines come in from one side, head up to a peak and head out the other side of the print. Looks a little bit like a tent. So if you have those and you found those, you are one of the 5% of our population and you're very rare indeed. So now you can have some fun exploring your fingerprints. Now you might not have the same pattern on each of your fingers, so feel free to fingerprint every single one of them and see what patterns you can find. You can also compare them to your family and see what similarities and differences you can find. You can also turn them into some amazing fingerprint art, like the examples you can see here. But thanks again for joining us on another day of GSC at home. We'd love to see your findings, so please take some pictures and share them with us using the hashtag GSC at home and leave any questions in the comments below and we'll try our best to answer them for you. 
But thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you another day at 10am here at GSC at home.